Father, I just thank you this morning, Lord, for the encouragement that you want to bring through the word this morning, Lord. I thank you that my words are yours and that your heart and your love is conveyed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so <laughs> feel free to, you know, say a little prayer for me while you're sitting there. Um, so I want to start this morning just by laying a foundation of scripture for living waters. I really felt like the Lord wanted to encourage us this morning um, just to allow those rivers of living water to flow through us um, and so that we can see the change in our families and our communities and, and essentially the region and the nation that we desire to see. So in John 4, 13 and 14, <clears throat> It says, Jesus answered and said to her, he was talking to the Samaritan woman, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Revelation 21.6 says, and he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Revelation 22, 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let, him who, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. And then Isaiah 12, 3 says, Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And when the scriptures refer to living water and the water of life, it's usually, it's usually referring to the spirit and the fullness of life that we can partake in salvation. Um, it's everything that pertains to life and godliness. And everything means everything. It, it means prosperity. It's having all that we need. And, you know, the prosperity gospel got a little crazy in, in certain circles. But prosperity is really just having all that you need to fulfill the call of God on your life, no matter what that call is, no matter how much it takes, no matter how little it takes. It's having enough to do what God tells you to do, to be obedient. And we see through the scriptures that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, gives freely the water of life. And we, we can draw from that well when we, when we just come to him, when we drink through the word, through worship, through prayer, through that intimate time with him, when we hear him speak to us, when we're just having that active communion and relationship with him, he's pouring out that living water in us. But we're not just supposed to just get filled up with the living water and never let it spill out. So essentially, it's, it's, he wants those living waters coming out of us. John 7, 37 and 38 says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And Matthew 10, 7 and 8 says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And that's what it looks like when the living waters are flowing out of us. We're, we're, we're boldly going out. We're healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, cast out demons. And that we often think of those things happening inside the church, and it's the church ministry. When I go to the healing meeting, when I go to the conference, and when I go to church, that's when those things happen. No, 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 no. He said, as you go, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. It's not just in these kinds of settings that that, 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 that is supposed to be happening in our lives. <clears throat> signs and wonders are actually for the unbeliever. I mean, he wants, to, don't get me wrong, he wants to do awesome things in our lives as well, but they're to be a sign and a wonder for the unbeliever so that they are drawn in to taste his goodness. Amen? The springing up of eternal life 
that we just read about in John 4 is not just the fullness of our salvation, but it's the words of eternal life that we speak to others. And I want to I share a little bit of my testimony with you because I really feel like it's a, a good example of um, living waters that result in eternal life. Before I got saved, and a lot of you have heard my testimony, some of you may have not, but before I got saved, um, I had just split up with uh, my daughter's father. I was just a single mom surviving. Like, I was just surviving. I was maintaining. You know, it was, I didn't really have any hope. I didn't have any purpose. I was in a really dark place. Um, I was on drugs. I was, there was just no hope for the future. I, it was just essentially, I have this little girl and I'm going to keep her alive. I'm going to keep me alive. We're going to keep food on the table. We're going to pay the bills and that's all there is to life. Um, you know, I'll go to work every day and do what I have to do to, to maintain, but I didn't really have any, I, I didn't see any value or worth in myself to even think that I had a purpose other than just going to work, paying the bills, keeping food on the, on the table for my daughter. That's all that I saw. That was it. There was nothing else. And then God put this group of people in my life. I had gotten a new job. It paid more money and um, so I went there, and little did I know how God was setting me up with this group of people, and a lot of them were women, that just started speaking to me every day in the break room about my value and my worth. And I'm really thankful because I, I've often been told that um, I'm a little stoic and hard to read. And... <laughs> It's not really true, is it? Um, and, but even though my face may not have shown up, my exterior didn't show that I was receiving what they were saying to me, I'm sure that it did not. I'm sure some days I was like, yeah, whatever, get out of my face. You know, just being honest with you, that's kind of was my, you know, protection, my rough exterior. But they didn't stop because of the look on my face. They didn't stop because they were afraid that I was rejecting them. They didn't stop because they were afraid of what I would think about what they were saying to me or what I would think of them. They continued every opportunity they got to speak to me about what Jesus had for my life. And when they would do that, something on the inside of me sparked and it was me drinking in those living waters that they were spilling out. And it was bringing spiritual life to me. And I'm thankful, again, that even though it may have looked like I was rejecting what they were saying, they didn't stop. And it's the same way when we go out, when we encounter people, we can't be concerned with whether or not they're going to reject or accept what we're saying. We have to bring the truth. That's the only way that we're ever going to see the, the influence of the kingdom outside these walls. And even if it looks like they're not, um, they're not agreeing with what we're saying or it looks like they're not accepting, you have no idea the seeds that you're sowing of eternal life that will come to fruition later on. Mark 16, 17, and 18 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. It doesn't say... These signs might follow those who believe. It might happen if you pray for the sick. It says it will happen. So our responsibility is just letting that flow out of us, being obedient to when the Holy Spirit is prompting us. 
because it's not about us. It's, it's not even really about our obedience. It's about what he wants to do in other people. It's about him influencing communities, your family, your friends, the region. It's about what he wants to do. It's not even about us. So we have to take our eyes off of ourselves and say, okay, Lord, whatever you want to do, here I am, use me. And it's not even always about us, you know, trying to get somebody to accept Jesus right there in that moment. It's about bringing his, his hope to people, his life to people, his peace to people. Because there's a lot of people that, it, you know, that deal with anxiety, they deal with um, fear, depression. And sometimes just in the moment, they're not ready to accept Jesus right there and then. But you, when you're sowing those words of life, eternal life into them, it's preparing them later on for an encounter with Jesus. He didn't just say that certain people need to come and drink. It's anyone who is thirsty. You know, sometimes you're, you're speaking life, you're speaking those eternal words to people who are already saved. It's everyone that needs to hear it. It's not just a certain group of people. And being thirsty doesn't mean that you're dry or that there's something wrong with you. It's just a matter of desiring the life of Jesus. Mark 16, 17 says they'll speak with new tongues. And a lot of times we think of that as being baptized in the spirit and praying in our prayer language. And, and that is true. But I think it goes a little bit further than that because when I got saved, my language changed. It didn't happen all at once, but the way I spoke changed. I didn't speak so negatively about my future. I finally had a hope. We, and I started speaking words of life because those living waters started flowing in me. I started digging into the word. I started spending time in prayer. And what I was drinking eventually started to come out. Mark 16, 17 says, they will cast out demons and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And that's living water. Living water brings people to an encounter with Jesus. And that's how we see our communities, our region, our states, our families changed by allowing the living waters to flow from us. This last week I was doing, um, I was doing school with Judah and um, it was talking about, I'm going to take a drink here because my throat's a little bit scratchy. Got that good old mid-Ohio Valley crud. So I was doing school with Judah this past week and it was um, talking about Jonathan Edwards who was a preacher during the Great Awakening. And the Great Awakening was a time when just the Spirit was really on the move and there were lots of people getting saved, accepting Jesus, and just really cool things were happening. And the quote said from Jonathan Edwards said, The work of God, as it was carried on, and the number of true saints multiplied, soon made a glorious alteration in the town, so that in the, in the spring and summer the town seemed to be full of the presence of God. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I want to see in our town, in our community. I'm going to read that again. The work of God as it was carried on and the number of true saints multiplied soon made a glorious alteration in the town so that in the spring and summer, the town seemed to be full of the presence of God. It was their salvation experience that changed the atmosphere in their town. They didn't just get saved and then go out and, and live and act like the rest of the world. That's not how you influence change in your communities and in your families and in your towns. You can't act like them and expect things to change. That's not the way it works. They were, they were excited about their salvation and they were 
allowing themselves to be set apart for the kingdom so that God could use them to bring about the great awakening. It was, if you have time to study that, if you've ever studied that, it's a real, it was a really cool time in history that, that truly atmospheres and communities and states were changing. And if God could do it then, he'll do it now. If he did it then, he'll do it now. When we share our stories, when we share our testimonies, when we share with people what God has done for us, they can drink. It brings seeds to people, and they can drink. A lot of people are searching for the kingdom. And it's really evident because you can see what they're flocking to, what lots of people are flocking to. There's this whole thing about New Age manifestation. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but it is, an ex- it is a counterfeit of the faith that we receive when we receive Jesus. When we receive Jesus, as a measure of faith is given. But this whole crazy manifestation thing, and I'm not going to go like super deep into it, but it's just this belief that they can visualize, and if they're thinking about it, if they're concentrating on it, it'll happen. It'll manifest in their life. Well, what does that sound like to you? A counterfeit of faith. See, people are searching for what we have, but because we're not sharing it with them, because we're not giving those, letting those rivers of living water flow out of us, they don't know that it's available right here. We see people flocking to psychics and card readers and things like that, and I know somebody who went to a psychic, and when she walked out of there, she didn't have, she didn't have peace. She had more fear and anxiety and worry about the future than she did when she went in there well, why did you go in there to find out what was going to happen in the future? Okay, did that solve anything? No, it didn't. You just had more fear and anxiety about it. That's counterfeit of the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry doesn't leave you with fear and anxiety. God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. So when he warns you about something that is coming in the future, it's not to scare you. It's to say, look, this is what's coming, and this is what you're going to do about it so that you can be at peace. You see people flocking to YouTube and there, you know, there's all kinds of crazy videos on YouTube that show, um, you know, seemingly strange or miraculous things happening. Counterfeit. Signs and wonders will follow us. We have to show what the kingdom of God is about. We have to let those living waters flow. It's the only, people are thirsty. They're hungry for it. But until we kind of get over ourselves and allow those waters to flow, we won't see, we won't see the kingdom the way that the way that the Lord wants it to. Every moment that we're alive has the potential to bring either the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of darkness. In Luke 17, Jesus says, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So everywhere you are is an opportunity for the kingdom to be there. Everywhere you set your foot, the kingdom is in you, so you have kingdom all around you. And it's an authority to walk in. And what is flowing out of you depends on what you're being filled up with. If, you're, if we're constantly concerned about what's, you know, the things of the world and what our fleshly desires are and all of those things, when we get into the mix of, of the crowd, that's what's going to flow out of us. But if we keep our minds on things of the kingdom on those things that are holy, that those things that are good, just like the Bible, just like the Word tells us to, that's what's going to flow out of us when we get in the mix of things. The Lord is really calling us to be an influence. And we can't 
you, you know, the word says, don't be conformed to this world, but be set apart. Renew your mind to be set apart. But if we go out and we're full of anxiety and fear and all those things, just like everybody else, how are we going to influence? How are we going to influence and bring about the change that we need to see? Revelation 22, 1 and 2 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. <clears throat> the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The water of life, which represents the Spirit, is what was feeding that tree supplying healing in its leaves for the nations. It comes from the river. The river that flows in us, it starts with us. So say this with me. Rivers of water flow from me. Look at your neighbor. Smile. Rivers of water flow from you. And it brings healing and restoration to my nation, to my family, to my life. Amen. Amen. I really, I'm, I thank God that someone was willing to speak that life to me. Because in just a few months after having those encounters with those people, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I gave my life to Christ. Now, those people never, they never approached me. Do you want to accept Jesus? Do you want to accept Jesus? Not one of them ever said that to me. All they did was say, you know, Jesus has something better for you. What you're, you don't have to live how you're living right now. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be hopeless. Because he has a hope for you. And after, after I accepted Jesus, that's what started flowing out of me. And I saw changes in my family. I saw changes in friends. Some of those friends I didn't have anymore because they didn't like the changes. They didn't like what was coming out of me. But I couldn't stop. And I want to just talk for a minute here about um, like that first love experience that we have when we accept Jesus because we're so like excited you know it's that it's just like falling in love you know when you meet your spouse and you fall in love and it's all oh it's all you know bubbles and rainbows and you know it feels so good and and that's how it is when we first get saved it just feels so good and then somewhere along the line we kind of lose that oh it feels so good feeling you know the the tests and the trials come and we're kind of like oh oh well that doesn't feel good But we're not really supposed to lose that first love feeling. When those tests and those trials come, we have to start encouraging ourselves. We have to start remembering and rehearsing the things that God had done, has done in our lives, so that it builds us up and it sparks again that, that first love, oh God, you're so good. And it's just as simple as, God, I thank you. I thank you for, for that you didn't leave me in that state of despair. God, I thank you that you brought me into a place where I had hope. Father, I thank you that when I didn't have the finances to buy the gift that I wanted for my child, I thank you, God, that you provided. You provided over and above my income. You just, you just provided some money that I wasn't expecting. Somebody blessed me with money I wasn't expecting. Father, I thank you that um, that when I got in your word and I wasn't feeling well, that you just poured out that revelation of your love and your goodness on me. Father, I thank you. You just go on and that starts to, like, you can't say stuff like that and stay in a state of, ugh. 
You can't. It's not even possible when you start, God, I thank you for it. Man, that ooh feeling just starts to bubble up again. And we can, you know, be encouraged by our friends and our family and our, and our, you know, church family and things like that, but we have to encourage ourselves like that. We have to, to speak to ourselves and our own soul and say, get up and praise the Lord. Get up and praise the Lord. The Psalms are full of it. Oh, my soul, praise the Lord. Get up and praise the Lord. So when we leave here, when we wake up in the morning, when we get ready to go grocery shopping or stop and get gas, every moment is an opportunity to allow people to drink from the living waters. It's an opportunity everywhere we go. And you don't have to be a super saint or it's not anything super spiritual. It's just being kind. It's just loving people. It's being nice to people. <laughs> I'm sure that you all know. I mean, you're out there in the workplace. You're out there in the grocery store. Lots of people are not nice. So it, it's not anything that's, it's very, very practical. God is very practical. It's just simply being kind to people and loving them and speaking hope and life where there's not any. It's telling your story, what God has done for you, what he's brought you through, what he wants to do for them. You just share, and you say, he did it for me, he'll do it for you, because he's good. Let them taste and see that the Lord is good. So I'm going to go ahead and end with that this morning, and let's just pray. And um, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your encouragement this morning, Lord. I thank you. Lord, that you just show us this week how we can influence our family and our friends, Lord, how we can influence those in our workplaces, how we can influence those that we encounter at the grocery store, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that those, those rivers of living water flow through all of us, not just this week, Lord, not just today, but every day, Lord. Help us to keep our focus where it needs to be, Lord. Help us to keep us, our focus on you. Help us to be bold. We thank you, Lord, for your desire to influence, to change our communities and our lives, our region, our state. Again, Lord, we say, here we are. Use us. Help our river to flow, Lord. Help remove all the fear, Lord, that would try to dam up that river inside of us. Remove all that fear of man. Remove all that that fear of rejection. Lord, we thank you for breaking that dam wide open that our rivers can flow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, you all have a fantastic week. Pastor Dean will be back next week. Woohoo! And you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you so much for being with us today in this service. Now listen, during this service, if you have been ministered to, there's something that happens when the Spirit of God begins to move upon a person. He begins to draw us unto Himself. And I want to tell you that today is a day of salvation. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you've accepted him at one point in time and your relationship is no longer where it needs to be, then I would ask you to simply repeat this prayer with me. As we pray, I just repeat it with me and let's believe God. He is so faithful and he is so true. 
Just pray this prayer with me. To say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness and your blood to wash me clean. I walk away from my old life and I walk into my new life. Thank you, Lord. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time or if you've rededicated, please comment, let us know. We got some material for you. We would love to absolutely get this into your hands so that it would help you and strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.